Hello, I'm Leanne McIntyre, the station manager of the Education Channel. Today we're highlighting a recent study on the increased numbers of children living in poverty, the rise of families whose children qualify for free and reduced lunch, and the alarming rise of children with food insecurity, which is not knowing about the source or quality of their next meal. So, joining me today are Sandra Frank, the CEO of the All Face Food Bank, and Beverly Gerard, the Director of Food and Nutrition Services for Sarasota County Schools. So, welcome, ladies. Well, thank you for thank joining you. me thank today. Thank you for inviting us. All right. So, let's start with uh, an abbreviated history of summer feeding, because this has been going on in this uh, county for several years. Um, and as it relates to children. So what happens when school lets out? We actually have had a summer feeding program in Sarasota County for uh, a number of years. Uh, we got very serious about summer feeding in 1996. Over the years, we've had any number of sites available to us. We started with regular school sites, and then one year we had a little bit of a hiccup with our summer school program and we decided the next summer we must go out to agencies. Mm -hmm. So we expanded our program back in the mid to late 90s. Uh, we've had as many as 36 sites. In the last few years, we've had 30 sites, mm -hmm. but we came to a point where we realized we were, we couldn't really figure out where the rest of the children were. Mm -hmm. we, we did our best yeah. to, to locate the, the sites where children were gathering, mm -hmm. but we needed help and Fortunately, Sandra and the people at the food bank uh, said we can help you. Right. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Yes. Yeah, so, um, how many? Ch I'm throwing a question in here, okay. but how many children? We have percentage, but how many children? You know, does that sort of reach out to? Five thousand, well, ten thousand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, during the school year, it's around twenty-one thousand. But the challenge, as Beverly is saying, is during the summer. It's in, in what, the four or five thousand? Yeah, we've had anywhere from 3,500 to almost 5,000 meals that we serve wow. a day. But during the school year, there are 21,000 children who are eligible for free and reduced price meals out of our 42,000 student population. We've had some difficulty trying to figure out yeah, where the students where, are. Where, where yeah. those others, mm -hmm. others have mm -hmm. disappeared mm -hmm. too. Um, so Sandra, the Child Hunger Study, which was sponsored by the Gulf Coast Community Foundation, uh, recently revealed their findings. Mm -hmm. So what were they and were they surprising or not? They were surprising in a number of ways. So, so what we did, we looked around the country to see who had done studies of child hunger. And surprisingly, there were very few studies, partly because of the confidentiality issues, partly mm. because just reaching the children and, and uh, getting the kind of response rate that would, would make it valid. The only study we had found was out of Cook County. So we took that study and brought it here to Sarasota and DeSoto counties and worked through the school district, which was amazingly supportive and the study involves at least 35 to 4,000 children making it the largest study of its kind in the country. It's absolutely groundbreaking mm -hmm. in its scope and it was very informative. I, I think what uh, sticks with me and what surprises so many people is that, that these children are actually worried. They are extremely worried about where their next meal will come from and they're very worried about what they're eating. And I, I was not anticipating that kind of response from mm -hmm. third and fourth graders who mm -hmm. were very concerned and then ninth, t 11th and 12th graders were very concerned. So right. it, to, to, to think that a fourth grader has the wherewithal and the knowledge that, and they're worried that they're not going mm -hmm. to eat mm -hmm. and they're worried about eating the wrong kind of things was very surprising. That, that, I read that also and that, that surprised me that yeah. they were cognizant of what was going on around mm -hmm. them, and that oh, summer's coming, and what's going mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. happen to me, or even during the during the year. During I know, Beverly, we've had shows before about um, children get breakfast at school, mm -hmm. the free and reduced lunch, mm -hmm. and that may be their only meals. That mm -hmm. may be the and only the meal, and you know, in talking with some of the children, we've had the opportunity. Uh, they'll say they don't know when they get home what they'll be able to eat. Mm -hmm which is very, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking to hear that. Mm -hmm. How did the conversation then come about between the two organizations and you two to um, address those issues this summer in maybe a different way? 
Well, I think it started with a meeting we had back in November. Sandra brought a group of people who wanted to know more about the child hunger issues. Mm -hmm. And you may want to talk more about the study in just a moment. But we actually met in my office and I began to share what's going on uh, in, in our food and nutrition services department and the services we do provide. We do provide breakfast at all the schools and lunch. And then in some schools, we actually provide a supper program. Mm -hmm. But again, in the summer months, where do those children go and where are they gathering? Mm -hmm. And that was our concern. Mm -hmm. And from our side, uh, the study that Dr. Marbert did on homelessness surprisingly contained a recommendation that All Faith Food Bank uh, conduct a summer hunger, summer campaign to restock the shelves and make sure we had the funds to feed families over the summer because typically annually that's when the the, the the shelves start emptying out people are heading north right. mm -hmm. um, and so because of his study we were looking at what can we do during the summer and mm -hmm. given the, the the not not just just my interest and concern about making sure children are well fed it's the board's feeling and, and the board's direction and we know Beverly our, our relationship with the food bank and the school system goes back 20 years at least. Mm -hmm. uh, Beverly's been on our board of directors for years and you know the, the, the All Faiths Food Bank has a, a really significant backpack program in the schools, mm -hmm. school-based pantries. We do a lot of education uh, programming through the schools, with the schools. So the relationship has been there a very long time. So it was natural. It was. It was just natural that when we decided we would do a summer campaign that we contact, we literally, literally contact Beverly first mm -hmm. and then took some of our keyboard members and staff down and, and it just blossomed very quickly from that. And then we had a meeting in February mm -hmm. um, at the food bank. Would you care to say yes. who all was invited yes. because I can't really recall. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, you know, you, 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 you want to assess. Uh, what's happening in the state, what's happening nationally, so you can decide what direction you want to go with your summer feeding program. So we brought the Department of Ag, the, the, Fed, the Florida Department of mm -hmm. Ag in, oh, probably three of their folks mm -hmm. were with us, and we brought a number of food banks, our sister food banks in, to talk with us about what are the best practices and who has the best practice. And after a day of listening and learning, uh, they told us <laughs> that the best practice was in Sarasota District Schools, the food nutrition services run by Dr. Beverly Girard. So we had it right in our backyard. Made it easy, made it very easy for us to simply say thank you all very much. Mm -hmm. We're going to enhance what they're doing here with the schools, start building on that and adding on additional summer feeding opportunities for the children. And what has been so beneficial to us is the food bank already has all sorts of relationships with other agencies mm -hmm. that we were not aware of, mm -hmm. and they've helped us make the connections so that we can move on with our summer mm -hmm. feeding and expand it. Right. Mm -hmm. So the, the collaboration and the synergy is that they've been able to identify those other children that you the school district wasn't able to find That's and you've correct. assisted with more locations? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Identifying additional locations. We, we work with 195 different agencies and partners anyway. Mm -hmm. So uh, we just started reaching out to them and then getting creative. Absolutely. Looking in the communities that had the highest need and mm -hmm. where we had friendships or where we thought we wanted to have <laughs> friendships. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, I have a wonderful staff who aren't afraid to knock on doors. Yeah. And, and make a compelling case. So we, we've gone, you've gone from 30 to we have 40 confirmed sites right now, mm -hmm. but we're working on an additional five to probably eight to possibly expand our program to 45 to 48 sites mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. One of the most exciting um, partnerships, I believe, that the food bank has been so instrumental in developing is we will this year go into DeSoto County as well. Mm -hmm. We will produce the food in Sarasota County mm -hmm. and the food bank will transport the food. The infrastructure that we have in Sarasota is excellent, yeah. easy, I suppose, in DeSoto Sorry. County to make this occur. Mm -hmm. So Sandra mm -hmm. and her staff met with the superintendent. Mm -hmm. Would you like to tell that story? It was, it was really very rewarding. It was a, a very positive and rewarding experience. And they were very open to having the Sarasota schools prepare the food and then the mm. food bank, to, uh, truly, what a partnership. Absolutely. Right. We're good Wonderful. in logistics. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and Beverly's the good in the preparation right. and the nutrition DeSoto side of it. Because isn't like one of the poorest counties mm -hmm. in, in the Florida. state? 
in so Florida. One would imagine, mm -hmm. I think I read there at about 90%. It's very high. That's right. Food and um, free and reduced lunch mm -hmm. in all their schools. In all of their so. schools. So here in, in Sarasota, one in four children is food insecure. In, um, over in DeSoto County, it's about 30 to 32 percent. Almost mm -hmm. a third of the mm -hmm. children are food insecure right, over right. there. And so here in Sarasota, uh, during the school year, we were how many on free and reduced lunch this past year? 50 percent. Right at 50 percent. Right correct. at 50 percent. And mm -hmm. we used to be... For years, we were at 33 percent free right, and reduced. Right. And then the economy took a downward spiral here locally. Mm -hmm. um, we're happy that we have finally stabilized. So we didn't see a big increase again in the 2013-14 school year. Mm -hmm. So we're finally starting to stabilize and we're hoping that it starts to decrease again right. next year. Right, so dis despite some of the figures and uh, conversations that the recession is over and the economy is improving, there's a segment of the population who, who have not been affected by what movement we've seen in the positive mm -hmm. direction. So Beverly has said stabilized 50%. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> yes. so, so let's stay with the fact yes. that half of the kids in Sarasota yes. County, right. which is incomprehensible, absolutely. absolutely, with the kind of affluence we have here, that half of the children are in free and reduced lunch. And mm -hmm. I don't think the community knows it. And part of what we've been trying to do right. with this campaign against summer hunger, among many other things, is raise the, the level of awareness, turn up the volume on mm -hmm. the number of children mm -hmm. who are, who are um, at or below the poverty level and qualifying for free and reduced mm -hmm. meals. Correct. Right. right. So um, is there anything that, um, the pub that the school district would like the public to know specifically? Um, is there any kind of call to action that you might want to The make one to specific people? thing um, that we would like the public to know is that these summer feeding sites are available to okay. children. So if anyone knows, if it's in their community, if mm -hmm. it's someone in their church, we have sites all over Sarasota County. So there's no reason for any child to go hungry. Right. We just need to get the information mm -hmm. out there. We need there. to get is the word there, out. Is there a phone number they can uh, share or call? Certainly, they can. I would say, please call my office. Okay. It's a four eight six two one nine nine. Please call my office mm -hmm. and let us let us direct you to a site. Right, mm -hmm. and also they could call. They could office. call the food bank. In addition to doing the, the the feeding sites this summer, we're going to be implementing summer backpack programs. Right. Mm -hmm. So last year, during the school year, just the school year, we mm -hmm. distributed about 80, and that's 8 zero, 80,000 backpacks to 80, kids. 80,000? 80,000. And that was that weekend hunger. Yeah, the mm -hmm. weekend hunger campaign. program. The child, child goes home with food over f to make sure they're not hungry over the weekend. We've right. never done it in the summer. Right. Right. So we're going to expand it into the summer. Hmm. And we're also going to be doing mobile pantries, which is the, 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 the trucks go into the, the schools that are open in the summer and help mm -hmm. distribute food to those in need. Mm -hmm. So from our side, um, this campaign against summer hunger is about that. And uh, we'd like the community to know that that, that isn't happening um, uh, f you know, without their support. And their support looks like doing a food drive Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or before they go home emptying their shelves and taking the food over to a Goodwill or a fire station in Sarasota County. Talk about partnerships. Yes. That's remarkable. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. So they can, they can take it to All Face, they, they can, can take, take it to, it to a good, fire station or any Goodwill. 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 Any, any okay. Sarasota Goodwill. So. And of course um, we're busily fundraising because this is going to involve purchase of equipment and food for the summer and mm -hmm. anything that they can do to support feeding kids would be Tremendously appreciated, right. much appreciated. That was that's not, and that has a question that comes to my mind is, right? So we have to feed all these children. So where where's the food coming from? I know all face, but then and the school district. As but far where as do we get it? as mm -hmm. far as the summer feeding program mm -hmm. goes, we will take care of the food. The food and nutrition services department will take care of the food. Where we feel so fortunate is that the food bank is going to help us out with equipment mm -hmm. and with logistics, mm -hmm. and that's huge. And simply the introduction to the various agencies has been an amazing mm -hmm. resource to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. let, let me make it very real to you though, Leanne. Yeah. Uh, last year I was in an elementary school on the first day of school, and a child came through and said, oh my goodness, we have fresh fruit again. And I, and I said, when was the last time you had fresh fruit? And they said, 
last school year. Hmm. So it's very we real. can't forget those things. Mm -hmm. And we will have fruits and vegetables every single day. That's part of the meal we provide to, to children. We will also have breakfast available at a number of our sites. Mm -hmm. So we're doing everything we can to reach out into the community and to take care of our young people. Mm -hmm. And there are obviously a number of reasons why you know, we'd want to provide um, food uh, for children, but in terms of a school district being involved, yes. uh, does it have some sort of relationship? There's, with the there's a tremendous amount of research that shows that academic performance, mm -hmm. academic achievement yeah. is related to the availability of food and good quality food mm -hmm. as well. Uh, a number of breakfast studies that show that children cannot, cannot um, concentrate that attendance is poor when nutrition programs are not available. Mm -hmm. So food in some cases does bring children to um, agencies, agencies even. That's yeah. why they come, come is for the food. And mm -hmm. we see that mm -hmm. quite often mm -hmm. with the food bank as well. But mm -hmm. yes, there's a tremendous body of literature that mm -hmm. uh, shows the link between nutrition and academic performance. Right. And this food insecurity yes. issue is, is rather a new part of information that we're gathering. Mm -hmm. um, any, any other uh, information you can provide on that? Because, uh, you know, besides the fact that obviously, if, you, if, you're not, if all you can do is think about the fact that mm -hmm. you're hungry and your stomach is growling, Right. Mm -hmm. You know, what else are you're, you going to... You're not going to be concentrating no. in school. And I, to pick up what Beverly was saying is academic achievement uh, you know, of course, then affects one's accomplishments Absolutely. and success in the work or in the workplace. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really imperative that we take care of kids now mm -hmm. rather than take care of what happens later. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, that we be attentive to that. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that you've mentioned that I do want to bring up is, is the agency partners that we have. As mm -hmm. I mentioned, there are 195. They're on the front lines. And they know who they are. <laughs> They're the ones on the front lines. And, and we're going to do the summer feeding through the, the various 45-plus right. sites that we're going to have, through the backpacks and through the mobile pantries. But on the ground are these agencies. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're feeding these families right Absolutely. now. And we'll, we'll you know, be collecting this food, purchasing this food to take out to them because they are the ones addressing hunger mm -hmm. in the immediate, in the here and now. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they're important partners in this. Right. Um, a carryover, I would think, Beverly, that, that we hope will happen in the school district is, I know we've talked about this before as well, registering for free and reduced lunch. Absolutely. Talk a little bit about that. We, every year we have a drive to uh, have parents sign up for free and reduced applications. They can go online and submit an application or they can submit a paper application. You do get services more quickly with an online application. Mm -hmm. And that usually happens around the end of July is when we have that available. So we will have that opportunity again this school year. Mm -hmm. But as I want to also mention, as Sandra did about the agencies, I just want to give a little shout out to our employees in the Food and Nutrition yes. Services mm -hmm. Department mm -hmm. because as Sandra said, the agencies are on the front line. The employees who are in the kitchens every single day preparing the food, many, many of them are parents or grandparents, and they're certainly all involved community members. Those are the people in our department mm -hmm. who are meeting the needs of the children on a daily basis. And we have an amazing uh, group of individuals mm -hmm. who work in our program. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a, it calls for um, a lot of dedication. I mean, you're Absolutely. working all through the summer when everyone mm -hmm. assumes that, oh, summer <laughs> vacation, yes. we're free. <laughs> and they're working. I, have, I actually have a question, Beverly. Yes. Getting families, how do we register families for the summer? Because I, I, I have this sense that the families are not aware of the opportunity, okay. and it's really important the more that we can engage. The beauty of this program is that the sites are considered area eligible. So we have used census tract information, or we have used free and reduced information from the existing schools. The parents don't need to do anything because they okay. have already enrolled for summer, they have already enrolled for a uh, free and reduced mm -hmm. program mm -hmm. in, in the 2013-14 school year. Mm -hmm. So the schools themselves are already eligible or in the cases of the agencies, they are area eligible by census tract mm -hmm. information. So, so they just need to come. come. So our job is to 
get the raise, word out. Get the word out. Get the word out, get the word out. Get the word out to the community, yes. to the families. Mm -hmm. And the families, families. Mm -hmm. and the community to, uh, to donate. How, uh, while well, we're doing this program, uh, what other uh, avenues are we are you pursuing to get the word out to families mm -hmm. to take uh, uh, take advantage of this opportunity, but also to get people to donate? The Florida Two Department things. of Agriculture has something they call summer break spot. Mm -hmm. So if you see the materials from that, that is our summer feeding program. Okay. I was also shocked and pleased when I went to a meeting one time and all of a sudden there was a poster that said 21,000. Mm -hmm. So that's something the food bank has taken on. Uh, I guess they didn't know they did it to surprise me, but it certainly <laughs> did. <laughs> that they had already gone in that direction and said, mm -hmm. we're talking 21,000 students in Sarasota County mm -hmm. are on free and yes. reduced yes. meals. Mm -hmm. What happens to these children in the summer? Right. So they have done a marvelous job right. getting the word out. Good. And I think one of the partnerships that we've been talking uh, about, one of the things that we might do together is in increase our, our communication and marketing mm -hmm. about the opportunities for, for kids to be fed this summer. And be creative in that. Where are families going to naturally be? Right. Uh, so that that's in, in the works right now mm -hmm. is, is where can we go? Through our agencies, most definitely. Right. Right. Through the relationships that you have, through right. our various newspapers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think we can do an even better job yes. of letting families know I about agree. the availability. And having more sites dis distributed throughout the county will make it easier for children to get, get to a location. Get to a location, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. there's, there, they, there's not going to be a disparity in North County, South County. Correct. No, I, I do want to mention, so. too, that when a child goes to a site, mm -hmm. they, they will need to remain on site. Mm -hmm. They can't come and get the meal and, and, and go away. Okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and we don't serve adults, either. This is specifically yeah. for, for children. children. So when the child comes, they... They're either enrolled in a program mm -hmm. or they, ha in some cases, there's an open site. Mm -hmm. They can come and get a meal, but they must consume the meal on the campus. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. they either stay mm -hmm. for the program or they right. leave. Right, mm -hmm. right. Well, I think for, uh, it may not feed adults, but it certainly should relieve many parents' mind that Absolutely. they can be out working or doing what they need to do and their, their, their children, children are being fed. Are being fed. So. One of the interesting things, I haven't had a chance to share this with Beverly, is with our backpack program, we send out year-end surveys. And, the sur and we added four or five questions about the summer feeding. Mm -hmm. It has been fascinating what the parents are saying. I'm going without meals because, for instance, a mom saying, I will go without meals in order to feed my child this summer. Mm -hmm. Um, another saying it's so much more difficult in the summer because they, they literally literally saying because our children are not being fed in school. So we have right. real life experience mm -hmm. from parents whose kids have not been fed over the summer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very, very, it's, of course it's validating, but it's hurtful as well right. to read these things. Right. But we do also have um, a big food drive that uh, takes place that everyone can be involved in very simply. Mm -hmm. Uh, that deals with our postal people. Yes. <laughs> what, what, let's talk about that. Yes, this is the annual National Association of Letter Carriers Food Drive. It happens May 10th mm -hmm. this year. And uh, really, that is the single largest collection of food in one day that, that anyone right. ever receives. It's, you know, we are pushing this year for th about 300,000 pounds, but that will only happen if the community remembers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and puts their bag, puts their bag out. out by the mailbox right. because the postal carriers will be there to pick it up. And it's mm -hmm. amazing. They'll make a couple of rounds right. to keep picking up. Picking up. And it is really important this year that everyone contribute to the letter carrier's food drive on May 10th. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I mean, it could be as simple as, you know, if you have a can of green beans in the house, I mean, just share that. That, that does you know, wonders for people. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, you know, put Absolutely. out 500 pounds of food. No, a bag of food. And remember when you have the buy one, get one. Mm -hmm. right. We, we mm -hmm. call it buy one, give one. Give oh, one. that's good. Mm -hmm. Do it. Mm -hmm. Do it. <laughs> and mm -hmm. save it yes. and put it in a bag yes. and set it that's, by the mailbox. That's great. That's great. There are a number of companies now doing that. Um, I, won't, I won't name them mm -hmm. on, on television, but there are a number of companies. So I think that's a wonderful a uh, slogan that mm -hmm. you could involve because I think people are becoming much more aware of that. Buy one and we give one yes. Yes. Um, makes, makes a difference. It does make a difference. So, all right, well, we have uh, 
used at the time, which is wonderful, and I think shared a lot of great information. So, Beverly, any last thought before we sign off? Leanne, I just want to thank you for helping us get the word out. I absolutely want to thank Sandra and uh, all the people at the food bank and the people with Gulf Coast Community Foundation mm -hmm. who funded mm -hmm. the Child Hunger Study. Mm -hmm. We have been working on getting the word out about the need we have here in Sarasota County for many years, but because of a partnership like this, we're not the only ones talking mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. Right. Yes. And, and, and I hope that our community really appreciates the and understands the partnership that we have and it's taken a, a number of years to get where we are today mm -hmm. but we feel we're in a really good place mm -hmm. to take care of our children, children. here in this community and, and it takes it takes all of us absolutely not, not just one entity or one person no, it'll require all of our help to address the problem um, I also want to thank Beverly for the years of support to the food bank and her absolute dedication to making sure children are well fed and to thank you for You're hosting us today I didn't give a phone number I should say it's three seven nine six three 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 for folks to contact us and help us feed children this summer there's nothing really much more important than that thank you very much so thank you both for joining me today on the Education Channel and discussing this really critical issue of childhood hunger here in Sarasota County. Thank you viewers for watching. We hope you hear the call to action and make a difference for a child this summer. Thank you.